Mm. Ich habe gerade was richtig Schönes in meiner Timeline. Es gibt wohl äh, ein weiteres äh, Motion. Hey guys, Will. Ja, hey Will. Das muss ich mir mal angucken. Will here. So today we're going to be checking out an absolute beast of a sim racing motion setup. This is the. Das ist. Welcher Hersteller ist das? Das habe ich jetzt schon zweimal gesehen. Diese Kurve hier an der Seite drin. Und was für ein Material ist das? Und warum ist hier ein extra Aluprofil drin? Fragen über Fragen. The Cubic System QS220 PL 3 Degrees of Freedom Motion System. Now, as I'm sure a lot of you guys that have been watching the channel for a while would know, we've been running a full motion setup similar to this on our daily driver sim rig for a number of years. Now, we've tested out a couple of different systems here on the channel over the years as well. Now, personally, I've never tested a system before that has more than two inches of total travel. This steps it up to a whopping four inches. So in today's video, we're going to... Da hat sich das gerade bewegt. Find out what an extra two inches feels like. Let's go. What the fuck? Okay, so before we kick off today's review, firstly, a big thank you to Cubic System for sending across this gear for us to check out today. Now, we will also be cross-comparing against some of the other motion systems that we've tested in the past here. So it's important that you wow. know that this is sent to us under the same conditions as all the other gear that we test here at Boosted Media. So what that means is that there's no external influence. Everything that we're going to be talking about today is purely just our own observations and our own opinions, and they don't get to see the video before you guys do. Now, if you do decide that you want to pick this gear up or anything else that you see in today's video, we will have some affiliate links in the description box down below. That's an awesome way of helping support our work here at Boosted Media at no additional cost to you. We don't have any sort of financial relationship with Cubic System themselves, but we will have a couple of reseller options available down there if you wish to use them. Obviously, there's no obligation to do so. So the QS220 PL comes in a couple of different configurations. And these, price. these are the same actuators price. that they actually use in their far more advanced hexapod type systems. You can have a look on their website to see some of the absolutely crazy things that Cubic System do. Now, another important thing to understand here is that Cubic System is actually a part of motion systems who also produce a lot of the motion setups that you see from companies like Next Level Racing. So there's Seat Mover, uh, their Two Degrees of Freedom motion rig that we tested just a little while ago as well. Uh, those are all actually produced by motion systems, the same guys that actually build this stuff. So because this same hardware is integrated in quite a few different configurations, it is, I guess, what you could call a modular system. So they have a Two Degrees of Freedom intro set which uses one control box, obviously the uh, controller module that we'll see later on too, and two actuators. And then you have a uh, pivot bar and the rig actually pivots around on that pivot bar. So adding the second module here. Nein, das ist doch scheiße. Das braucht kein Mensch. With the additional two actuators. Vier Akkumulatoren, warte mal. Aktuatoren oder nichts? Gives you the sensation of heave in the rig as well. So not only can the rig move from side to side and front to back or pitch and roll, it can also heave. And that gives you the sensation of going over jumps, bumps in the road, and you know that pit of your stomach feeling. Ich stell mir das gerade sehr witzig vor, in Turn 1 auf Nürburgring, wenn du so runterfällst. When you go over a crest, all those kinds of effects that you miss out on with the two degrees of freedom. Now that said, we did actually find that uh, having the actuators configured behind the rig on that next level racing setup actually did give you quite a good sensation of heave still. Now, unfortunately, they haven't sent us across that pivot bar to use with this particular system. So we can't test that out for you guys. But given that this system is so much more expensive than that next level racing motion plus, we'll definitely be making some comparisons. Oh yeah, Bathurst is richtig witzig, Alter, wenn du den Berg runtertauchst, Junge. Und dann in den Dipper rein. Okay. Ich bin das noch nie. Also, ich bin äh, selber Motion schon gefahren, aber nie die krassen Strecken. Ich würde das so gerne mal ausprobieren, aber ich habe die finanziellen Mittel nicht, mir das zu kaufen. Today's video in regards to that as well. So, talking about pricing, I should give you the pricing of this system. Make sure you're sitting down for this. It ain't cheap. So, uh, the two degrees of freedom intro setup with the two actuators comes in at 5,000 Euro. That doesn't include. Naja, das geht ja noch. Include any uh, shipping or taxes or anything like that. They do. Ach so. Na, dann sind wir also bei sechs. Bei, bei sechs dann. We have a pretty well established distribution network around the world too. So there will be some links down in the description, as I mentioned before, to some of our partner resellers. But do your own research there. Make sure you're getting the best price. Obviously, it is a big, bulky and heavy system. So you are going to want to make sure that if you're buying one of these, you get your hands on it in the most logistically sensible way possible. Uh, then when we step up to the three degrees of freedom extended set, like what you see here, that steps the price up to uh, 9,700 oh! euros. So... Okay, gut. 
Dafür hätte ich sitzen müssen. Really, really, really expensive. Uh, if you need the mounting brackets like what we have here as well, which you're going to need some sort of mounting solution for this, uh, you're looking at an extra 80 euro per oh. pair. For das geht ja. It did actually used to be 60, uh, 60 euro per mount, but they've actually Ach so. dropped that price now, which is one thing that I'm happy to see. Mm. Now, just to give you the point of reference here, comparing this to something like the D-Box G5 that we reviewed recently as well, again, link down in the description, uh, that came in at 7,100 euro. So still extremely expensive, but nowhere near the price of this guy that we're checking out today. So hopefully that sets the stage. Ich dachte eigentlich immer so, D-Box ist so top of the line, aber ey, ist okay. Lass uns doch einfach noch mal ein bisschen Geld draufschmeißen. Wobei bei D-Box kannst du ja auch noch ein bisschen teurer machen. And sets uh, what our expectations should be going into this review. Now let's go in and take a more detailed look at the hardware and get this mounted up on our Track Racer TR120 sim rig. So let's oh, take a moment now to actually go through what we get inside the uh, 3DOF kit and kind of break things down into their module. Da steht ein zweites Auto drin, Will. Was ist das für ein Auto da im Hintergrund? Es sieht aus wie... An SUV. Components, so it all makes a little bit more sense how this all goes together. So starting off with, obviously, you have your two packages with the two uh, actuators. So you've got a huge control box here, and we'll flash some dimensions up on the screen as we go through this rather than pausing to kind of measure it all live. But big control module here, and then you've got two actuators connected to each of these control modules. So one will be your front <laughs> and one will be your rear. Now, a couple of interesting points just to note here. Firstly, you'll notice that we've got some... Um, metal cable glands here. Everything is very well shielded and you'll see that when we go through the internals in just a minute. But everything is kind of hard wired here. So you can't actually disconnect these and move them around. Which nee, nicht der BMW, das weiß ich. Der schwarze, da steht noch ein SUV. Similar to what we see on the D-Box, a more industrial kind of way of doing things. Now the advantage of that is that it does reduce the number of failure points or potential failure points. As Alter, die Kabel, Junge. Das sind solche Oschis, Junge. As opposed to, you know, things like Molex connectors, which can wear out over time. You could argue that this may be over-engineering for, you know, the context of sim racing, but that's up to you guys to decide. Obviously, you are paying for the uh, yes, Buster. privilege of having this kind of quality, so there's no question about that. Large actuators here as well, and if we flip this guy up onto its side, you'll notice here the mounting points. So there's actually some little Teflon or nylon or plastic spaces actually built into those mounting points, and they're little M8 bolts which will go in there. So you're not going to be able to mount these directly to your rig without some sort of a mounting bracket. Now, remembering again that these are a modular system, so there's a lot of different options which are available. Mittlerweile bin ich sehr froh, dass ich große Monitore habe und meine Wheelbase nicht mehr unter meine Monitore schieben kann. Für den Fall der Fälle, dass irgendwann mal ein Motion And one of the things, if you look on Cubic's website, is they actually do sell a, uh, a standalone platform which has the four actuator system built into it, and basically a platform for the steering wheel which actually connects off the top of these actuators, and then a pedal plate and some mounting rails for the seat wow. and whatnot. So that may actually be a really good option for you if you Because? don't already have a sim rig that you're wanting to mount this to. So it's worth checking that out. Obviously, again, it is pricey, but it does, from what I can see, at least look very, very clean. But if you do need their mounting brackets, then this is what you're going to be purchasing. So these are, as I said before, 80 euro for a pair of two. And there was a little bit of damage present on these. We did unwrap them. Uh, it isn't shipping damage because these were actually very well packaged. But you can see there the, um, the powder coating is just kind of flaking away there. So, I mean, for 80, for 80 euros for a pair, you don't really want to... Das würde ich nicht cool finden. Be seeing that kind of thing. It looks like there's some. Mitzi, bitte. Du brauchst gar nicht so grimmig gucken. Nur weil du Mittag gegessen hast und dich jetzt fühlst wie eine wie Arnold Schwarzenkatze. Ne? Spann dich. Lass mich mal jetzt hier in Ruhe. Äh Nein, du legst dich jetzt nicht auf die Tastatur. Danke. Oxidization or something there that maybe is causing that powder coating to flake. But obviously that's not the kind of thing you want to be looking at every single time you get in the sim rig. Three of the four mounting brackets that we have here all had that same kind of problem going on. So definitely some quality control improvements that could be had there. But basically the Maga, wenn ich 9000 Flöten dafür hinlege, ne? da würde ich aber richtig tilt sein, wenn ich das auspacke. Da wäre ich richtig tilt. Das finde ich nicht gut. Mm -mm. The way these work is uh, you can imagine These parts are going to bolt on to the actuator itself through these four holes here. And then on the uh, inside here, we've got a series of M8 mounting holes with 40 millimeter spacing between them. So if you've got a 4080 sim rig, you'd be using two of them, uh, 4120 and then 4160 with the 40 mil spacing between them. So all that's going to happen is you're going to bolt this to the side of your rig and then the actuator is going to slide in and you're going to mount it 
on those four points. So pretty simple. But yeah, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I was disappointed for the price to have those manufacturing defects. And I, I really do think, again, talking about price, the kind of price you're paying for something like this, I do think that they should include these for free. Ja, die kommen oben noch drauf. Also du bezahlst jetzt 9.100 Dollar für das, äh, für das Set und diese vier Dinger kosten 160 Euro extra. Also die musst du extra dazu kaufen. So, und die sind kaputt. Drei, wenn ich das jetzt richtig, wenn ich das jetzt richtig verstanden habe, drei von den vier haben so einen Fehler. Da wäre ich richtig tilt. Da wäre ich richtig, richtig tilt. Da würde ich richtig abkotzen. Sowas so kannst du nicht verschicken bei dem Preis, das geht nicht. Also das gehört ja zu dem Set dazu, ne? das inkludiert ja den... Wenn das jetzt in der Packung drin wäre, würde ich das auch schon scheiße finden. Aber du bezahlst extra dafür nochmal on top oben drauf, damit das kaputt zu dir kommt? Nee, danke. Nee. If you need them, because I mean, you're already paying a huge amount of money. And yeah, it just it just seems silly. But again, just do check your local resellers because we found that some resellers do actually include some different mounting solutions. And uh, talking about the D-Box again quickly, when we uh, when we got our hands on the D-Box G3, uh, we got that through uh, SimLab and they actually included some of their own mounting brackets to mount directly to their P1X cockpit. So do your research there, make sure that you're getting the best thing that's going to suit your needs best. Now, while we're still talking about mounting, let me just quickly come around here. One of the things that um, was really great about the D-Box G3 from SimLab as well is they actually included a mounting bracket for these control modules that allowed you to basically mount them underneath your rig and not have them sitting on the floor. Now you'll notice on the side of these boxes there are actually some mounting holes there so there's some threaded inserts which you could actually mount this to your rig with but there's no included brackets or anything like that. Now obviously You know, it's not designed to be used with any one specific sim rig outside of their own platform, which we discussed just earlier. So it makes sense that there isn't provision for that because they can't account for every single rig that's out there. But it is going to make it a little bit more tricky to mount to your rig if you are wanting to sort of keep things up off the ground, particularly if you're on carpet. You don't really want to have an electronics box like this that's got airflow through it sitting on the carpet because it may bring in dirt and debris and things like that. Also be mindful that there is a, uh, an intake on the top here too. So you don't want to be sort of sitting directly above that, having dirt coming off your shoes and falling directly into that too. So just be sensible with the placement of these boxes. And uh, if we flip that around, you'll actually mm -hmm. see on the back side of this too, just be careful of those connectors there. There's the various different connections which we're going to use to uh, get this all up and running. I'll run you through what's included in terms of connections in just a minute. So look, really it's as... Das hört sich nicht so an, als wenn da alles dabei ist. Simple as that in terms of the, you know, the mechanical hardware here. Uh, let's have a quick look at the internals too, just to run you through that and the build quality there. And then I'll take you through the connections too. So come over here. And what we've got is basically just the lid taken off and then this brushed aluminium insert, which basically just makes the uh, Cubic logo look nice like that. It's not really serving any other functional purpose. I thought it might be a heat sink or something, but it's not really doing anything like that. But yeah, look, a pretty simple design overall when you break it down into its individual modules. So you've got your power supply coming in here with a sealed Meanwell unit. Meanwell being a uh, very highly regarded and high quality power supply. So that's taking your 110 to 240 volt input. We will talk about voltages a little bit later on because that is significant when it comes to the uh, the load rating for these for these actuators. Uh, so <laughs> that's stepping it. <laughs> Kannst du schon mal uh, dein Kraftwerk anmachen? Down to 24 volts DC. That then goes into our line supply circuit here. You can see that's pretty hefty. We've got some chokes and some capacitors, a couple of fuses there too as well. So that's going to protect the circuitry should anything go wrong, theoretically. Also worth pointing out here as well, you can see the extents they've gone to to uh, ground everything throughout the entire chassis as well. We're not going to go into a ton of detail there, but you I mean you can see the quality for yourselves. Even the, uh, even the lid here is strapped on and grounded too. So then over here we have our logic board. You'll notice that all of these circuit boards actually have motionsystems.eu stamped on them as well. So they are all their own proprietary design, which is always a nice thing to see. They're not just using off the shelf, uh, obviously off the shelf components, but not off the shelf PCBs. It's all their own design. So this takes the, uh, the inputs and data from the other modules, as we'll see in just a minute, and uh, does all its logic stuff, and then passes that out via these RJ45 connections to the, uh, to the driver boards for the individual actuators. So basically this is modular as well. You've got two logic boards here. We're not going to go into all the details on that now. But you can see down here, there's a massive aluminium heatsink sitting on top of the power delivery circuitry on each driver board and then the power is distributed down through these connectors into the individual actuators and you can see there are some little ferrite chokes 
on each of those going out as well. So obviously they've put a ton of effort here into grounding and uh, electromagnetic interference to make sure that you're not gonna have any issues. Now we've never actually had any issues with anything that we've tested ever at Boosted Media with, uh, with EMI, but we will obviously let you know if we do come across any issues with this. I don't think we will though. And uh, yeah, then you can just see a couple of braking resistors on the sides here as well in their own little cages, which are actually bolted to this, uh, this aluminum piece here. So maybe it does have a bit of a heat sinking effect when it's all bolted together, but yeah, we'll let you know if anything gets excessively hot when we're using it a little later on as well. But yeah, absolutely nothing to complain about here in terms of the design and how this is all constructed. Obviously, you would be expecting to see the best of the best when it comes to build quality at this kind of price point. Oh, my God, for 9,000 flöten, möchte man das wohl meinen, oder? Also... But looking in here, all the uh, all the terminal blocks are screw type terminal blocks. You can see the individual cables have all got decent lugs on them as well, so they're not just twisted wires shoved in. Uh, we don't see any dodgy connectors that are just like hot glued in place or anything like that. So not that there's anything wrong with that. But yeah, Maga, also nine. We pay just nine thousand one hundred euro. That must ja wohl sein, dass er die Elektrik vernünftig ist. Also, wisst ihr, wir tun jetzt gerade so, als wenn das der, der, als wenn das jetzt total der, der Shit ist. Bagger, das sind 9.100 Euro, da erwarte ich, dass das da drin aussieht wie geleckt. Das, dafür kaufen andere Leute, kaufen sich dafür ein Auto oder eine Anzahlung für eine Wohnung oder was weiß der Geier. Also, come on. But again, we're looking at industrial quality stuff here and uh, that is exactly what I see when I open this up and have a look internally. So, nothing to complain about there at all. So that is the main individual components that make up this system. Let's just have a quick look now at how it actually all connects together. Now, one of the things that I do want to call out here is the exceptionally well presented instruction manual. You'll actually get two of these if you uh, if you buy the 3 dof system, but this takes you through absolutely everything. Mal angenommen, Active Panels in Motion würde circa vom Preis gleich sein. Active Pedal. Thing you need to know to get this up and running. So I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time, you know, picking this to pieces, but Trust me when I say that every bit of detail that you're going to need, even just down to things like circuit designs and wiring diagrams and everything is all in here. So it's all very, very well presented. Again, as you would expect at the price point. But I've turned the page here to the wiring diagrams that show you actually how to hook everything up. So if we break it down into its individual components here, you've got this little tiny USB, I guess dongle you could call it, with a micro USB connection on this side. Surprising that it's not uh, USB-C. Uh, in this day and age, but it is what it is. Uh, you can see it's an aluminium bottom and top plate and a 3D printed enclosure. Again, for the price, 3D printing isn't something that I expected to see, I'll be honest with you, but I mean, it's... Wieso sieht doch gut aus? Also da, da also 3D-Druck ist halt 3D-Druck. Die müssen ja auch irgendwo mal gucken, dass die noch ein bisschen Marge machen, ne? It's a functional piece of equipment. It's probably going to be tucked away and you're probably never going to look at it again, let's be honest. Das so kommt noch dazu. nothing to be too upset about, I don't think. But if that kind of thing bothers you, just so you are aware, it's not fully aluminium. You've got a couple of IEC power connections and those do have ferrite chokes on them as well. And depending on where you're ordering for, uh, that will determine what kind of plug they include. So they did actually include Australian plugs for us, which is nice. Many, many of the things that we uh, get sent these days don't actually come with Australian plugs. So that was a nice little touch there. We do tend to run out of these cables over time. Uh, so then there's a couple of RJ45 connectors here. One of those is gonna be for connecting the uh, dongle through to the primary control module. And you can see those are shielded RJ45 connections too. And then the second one is gonna be to daisy chain the first unit across to the second one. Because again, this is a modular system, you can actually add all the way up to six degrees of freedom if you want to. And the way you would do that would just be to continue to daisy chain more and more and more units together. And that will give you things like uh, heave and surge and all those kinds of things. Uh, then when you get to the last one, they include a little tiny dongle here which you plug in and that's basically just a terminator to let the system know that that device is the last one. Okay, so we've got the system all set up now on our Track Racer TR120 test cockpit. Now, one thing just to point out here, you'll notice with the TR120 that it does have this step in the profile. It's wider at the back than it is at the front. So what we've done is we've added some extra 40 mil profile on the front here just to step it out so that the um. system is completely square with itself. So you can see it is in a, it's in a rectangle shape. 
There is uh, some important calculations when it comes to spacing. That's all covered in the instruction manual. But to give you the basic rundown, it does need to be a rectangle. So the width has to be identical. And then basically from there, you put the measurements for the physical spacing into the software and it does all the calculations for you. So generally you wanna have the, uh, you wanna have the rear actuators pretty far back, as far back as you can get them. Simply because the bulk of your weight is generally gonna be towards the rear of the sim. That's where you're sitting. So uh, you wanna have the weight distribution as even as you possibly can, just to make sure. Oh, I would mich ja richtig ankotzen, wenn ich so einen Rick hätte, Alter, und ich musste an der Seite noch ein Aluprofil ranschrauben. Puh, da würde ich richtig reinkotzen, Junge. Oh, da würde ich so kotzen. Aber hey, ich habe das ja vor kurzem wieder festgestellt. Ich habe ja genau so einen Rick. Whee! So, let's jump in now. I'll take you through the software and then we'll get into do some driving. All right, so let's take a quick look now at the Cubic Manager software. Now, okay. for anybody who is familiar with Next Level Racing Seat Mover Traction Loss or Motion Platform, the software here is pretty much exactly the same. As we mentioned, what have we done there? All this race room, I racing, motion theater, F1, dirt, dirt four, BMG, Automobilista, Azeto Corsa, Azeto Corsa BMW, Azeto Corsa Park, Azeto Corsa Competizione. Also, eigentlich die ganzen wichtigen Sachen. Okay. Earlier, those products are also developed are no by Motion Systems, who also make Cubic, so it makes sense that it's running the same software. So really powerful software. There's a lot of stuff that you can do here. I'm only going to scratch the surface in today's video, but if there's any specific questions that you have, definitely let us know in the comments down below. And if there's enough interest, we can of course come back and cover some aspects in more detail. But basically, what we have here is a an array of all the all the titles that uh, that are detected on your system. So obviously, what you see here will depend on what you have installed, and then you can also import import and export profiles too. Uh, there's also a cloud system here too, which is a really nice addition. So you can click on the profile database and that will allow you to actually go through some uh, some profiles that other people have made that oh, have cool. been approved and tested by Cubic Systems. And you can then import those in and use them as a baseline to fine tune to your own personal preference. So that's nice. really cool. It does also auto detect the game that you launch as well. So you don't have to go in and switch profiles. And I Very good. I do really like, uh, in particular, coming from the uh, D-Box system that I run on my daily driver rig, I do like that it's only one software package that you have to install here. One of the things that I don't like about D-Box is that there's multiple titles that you have to install. You kind of have to go into different areas to do different things. And it can be, well, once you get your head around it, it's fine and it's easy and it kind of just all happens in the background. So it's not really a problem. Doch, ist es für den Preis. Entschuldigung. But this is a lot cleaner. So I think it's worth just pointing that out to you guys. So first time that you fire up the system, it's going to run through a calibration process. Uh, there's a little tab on the right-hand side here called Action Center. That's going to pop up and let you know anything that you need to do to get everything up and running properly. So firmware updates, software updates, uh, configuring all the titles that are installed in your system as well to actually work with this. A lot of that can happen automatically. You just click a button and it does it. If there is any manual configuration that needs to be done, it will tell you exactly what you need to do there okay, too. Cool. And I haven't had any issues at all with getting things up and running and working with any of the SIM titles that we have installed here on this list. So that is all really good. And then we also have a tools and diagnostic thing here as well. So again, this will run you through the basic setup process as a wizard the first time you fire up. But just to give you an idea here, there is a configure tool which you'll need to run. And this is what we were talking about before, where you have to tell it the physical position of each actuator. So I'll just quickly show you this. At the moment, we're running a four actuator system. We click next, and this is where we put in those measurements as well. So we've got the width in millimeter between the center and center of the two sides, and then the length from front to back. The stroke oh. is locked at 100 millimeters or four inches, and then we have to choose the layout that we have here as well. So this will. Das finde ich zum Beispiel total geil, dass du es halt. Es ist schwer teuer, ja, aber es ist super simpel gemacht. Also ich würde mal sagen, das schafft dann wohl auch jeder. Yeah. And uh, I think it's time to jump on the track. Yeah. So to capture my initial impressions, we've loaded up iRacing around Mount Panorama. Lots of undulations. Oh, oh, da fährt also jemand Mount Panorama. Sehr schön. Das wollen wir sehen. Relation here, and particularly the uh, the first straight, which we're going to be coming on to, it's got a real crest in the road that I remember with the D-Box G5 and G3, I really got that sensation of that pit of your stomach movement as you go up over the crest. So it's going to be really interesting to see whether that occurs here as well. Uh, driving the Ferrari 488 GT3, pretty stiff chassis, so we should feel a lot of vibration and movement through the rig. Obviously, we will be testing out some other stuff in today's video too, but just for initial impression, I thought this would be a good starting point. So I'm going to uh, activate the motion now. Okay, so we're going through the calibration. Whoa, <laughs> okay. All right, I've got an engine vibration now. 
So immediately, just that engine vibration, you really get a good sensation throughout the entire chassis. Not ich kann es nicht verfahren und ich freue mich für ihn. Similar from what you get with a tactile feedback type system. So when I rev up, obviously getting the sensation of the RPMs coming up and lowering. So that tactile feedback underneath is very good, just at a basic level like this. One thing I am noticing is that the sensation does taper off a little bit at the higher RPM. So I don't know whether we're just getting beyond the frequency response range of the actuators, but again, this can all be adjusted potentially in the system anyway. So I don't want to spend too much time picking this to pieces immediately, but this is the profile that they suggested I uh, use as a first experience. But let's head out. Whoa, okay. So a good amount of sensation there. Definitely feels very sharp immediately, very responsive. A lot of texture there. The gear clunks feel really nice as well. I've done a really good job of that. Going over the little crest now. Okay, so yeah, it wasn't super aggressive, but that's okay. It wasn't kind of that really sort of wow kind of feeling, but remembering again, we have cranked things down a little bit in this profile. But definitely a really good sense of the surface of the road and all that, that I think that the tactile side <laughs> definitely feels a little more detailed than what I'm used to with the D-Box. So that is, that is very good. I am running more aggressive okay, jetzt bin ich gespannt. motion though than I'm used to running. So it may factor into that as well, but as we crash into the wall there. <laughs> it's very different from what I'm used to experiencing, but let's uh, let's continue here. Okay. Also, das habe ich mir jetzt ein bisschen anders vorgestellt. Das, was da jetzt gerade steht, sind äh, 9260... 9280. They know what they're doing, and uh, that's evident now. But what I ended up doing is just increasing the uh, the body roll just a touch over what they had previously, and then um, winding down the overall effects to about 85% strength in terms of the movement of the vehicle, not so much the. Aber nur die Bewegung, ne? Der Rest nicht. Der Rest kostet extra. What's happened, what, that, what that's resulted in is, you know, me being thrown around less in the car than I was before, having a little bit more control. I felt like I was just over that edge for me of, you know, the balance between the car driving me versus me driving the car, I guess you could say. But where I've landed now, really, really, really happy with this. And I think, you know, I, I've been spending the last hour just sort of driving around and sort of analyzing everything in my mind, sort of trying to figure out where to focus the uh, the attention for you guys so you can really sort of know where, where things are standing out for me. And really, the main thing that's jumping out to me is the sensation of extreme response time and responsiveness in general. It feels so snappy and so, I guess, aggressive would be a good word to describe it. You really feel every single little bump. And even like I've got the, I've got the gear change effect cranked up quite high. That's something that I've always enjoyed ever since the very first time I tried any sort of tactile feedback with the Das würde ich auch volles Radieschen hochdrehen. Butt kicker system. Aber können wir mal Rally oder sowas machen? Old next level racing rig about four or five years ago now, but just the immersion that effects like that give you are absolutely amazing. You know, like I know that I'm not really, I guess I'm not really doing it justice in terms of my excitement just because, you know, I've been using motion systems for a very long time now. So if you're comparing this to something like the Simicube pedal review that I did the other day, you'd see, you know, you'd notice that I'm not as excited now as I was in that video. That was because I was experiencing something new for the first time. This isn't anything new to me, but this is definitely taking it up a notch from what I've experienced before. Just in that, I always found with the D-Box system and the Sigma Integrale system as well, you reach a point where if you crank up the effects too high, it does start to feel a little bit disconnected. Not only does it start to throw you around so much that you can't control the car so well, but it does start to feel a little bit disconnected. That's einfach... Wenn's nicht so teuer wäre, hätte ich schon. 
with the movement of the sim versus what you're seeing on the screen and just how responsive everything is, how tight everything feels. So let's head down the mountain now. Ich finde das schade, also ich persönlich jetzt, als Zuschauer, dass wir genau diese Sensation gerade nicht sehen. Das wäre wirklich das allerletzte, was ich persönlich als erstes in eine Review auspacken würde, iRacing. Das würde ich ganz am Ende machen. Ich würde vorher, würde ich wirklich Rally fahren, Rallycross, alles was, wo du durch die Gegend geschmissen wirst und dein Auto einfach nur absolute Randale macht, bevor ich das hier tue. Das würde ich am Ende machen, weil das mache ich ja eh jeden Tag, wisst ihr? So look, overall, as you would expect for the price, it's a really well presented product. And yeah, I think if you've got the money for something like this, then I have no issue recommending it. But I guess what it comes down to ultimately is, is it worth the extra money that you're... Das ist Industriezeug, sei ja, das kannst du ewig benutzen. Das, das, ist wie, das ist wie die Motoren, die in den großen Wheelbases drin sind, die kannst du... Paying over some of those other systems that we've tested in the past. And look, really, I think that's going to come down to personal preference. As I touched on earlier, though, I never experienced a scenario where I felt disconnected from the force feedback or like I was floating in space. And I'm not sure whether part of that might be the fact that we have such a large amount of travel available means that the washout filter doesn't have to be quite so aggressive. You can imagine if the platform is already in a more upright position, then it's still able to generate effects around that position without having to actually return to center before doing so. So maybe it's contributing to the overall effects. I, I'm really not sure. Even just reviewing the footage, I couldn't really tell you. But what I would say there is particularly if you're only really interested in doing road racing and if you're driving cars that are more rigid in their feel, like, you know, your GT3, GT4, Formula style cars, then the benefit of a system like this over something like a D-Box or a Signa Integrale, which we've tested in the past as well, is somewhat more diminished. I think really where the value is in the extra money that you're spending for this over some of those other systems is purely just if you're doing stuff that requires really, really fast response time over large distances of travel. In the really finer details, although there is a slight advantage with this system over the others that we've tested, it, it, it isn't a huge difference. And I think, you know, this is starting to get beyond the point of diminishing return compared to some of those other systems too. So I think if you're focused on road racing if, and you want the absolute best of the best that's available, at least out of the ones that we've tested, then yeah, this is absolutely fantastic and it will deliver that experience. Whether or not it's worth it, well, that is just an individual choice thing and hopefully we've conveyed enough information about the experience in this video along... Ich glaube, also wirklich, it, es ist nur eine Vermutung. Also die Gruppe für solche Geräte ist ungefähr so groß. Würde ich mal sagen. With our other reviews that we've done on other systems that you're able to make a more informed judgment call now. So I really hope that today's video has helped you out. Please leave a thumbs up if it has and consider Super subscribing gerne. as well so you don't miss out on future reviews like this one. And if you do want to pick up any of the gear that you've seen in today's video, there will be some links down in the description. Those are an awesome way of helping support our work here at Boosted Media at no additional cost to you guys. That's what keeps us running here. So we really do appreciate your support there if you find our content valuable and helpful. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you again very soon. Bye. Bye. 10.000 Glocken. Boah. Man lebt nur einmal. Ja, Impuls. Ich hab... Du, hätte ich jetzt... Ist, bin ich ganz ehrlich, ne? Hätte ich äh, 10.000 Flöten rumliegen. Also jetzt wirklich einfach rumliegen, wo ich sage, okay, das ist für die Firma, das kann ich investieren, dann hätte ich das schon lange bestellt. Bin ich, bin ich ganz ehrlich für euch. Aber ich habe keine 10.000 Euro rumliegen, die ich in eine Firma investieren kann. Das äh, wird nichts.